Don't forget to check out our new giveaway. Sammy's camera is giving away $500 gift certificate. Check it out at the end of the video. We were working in Utah shooting for a client in late February and had a day off to shoot some slant lens lessons. We found a great location with teepees and hired a horse and found a mountain man and a woman to be in our shot. We're going to take a different approach though with this lesson. With all the talks about iPhones and 4G, I want to see how much difference it really makes. Sammy's camera in Los Angeles was nice enough to ship us several cameras so we can do a camera comparison. That's an awesome package to receive with all those different cameras. It was like Christmas, only you had to send it back. Anyway, let's take a look at comparing six different cameras and the images they make. The camera profiles were all put on neutral where applicable. The question for today's lesson is, can you match the images from these six different cameras without knowing which one was taken with which? We will shoot the same scene of our mountain people using the following cameras. The iPhone 5C with its 8 megapixel camera and a 15% larger CMOS sensor. Very impressive. The iPad, not the iPad 2 or Air, just an average old iPad. The Nikon D800 with a 36.3 megapixel full frame sensor. You know, I'm not a Nikon guy, but this is really an impressive camera. The mirrorless Sony 7R with a 36.4 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor. These are great little cameras. The Canon Mark III with its 22.3 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor. The Canon 1DC. I actually love this camera. It's 4K and a great camera to shoot stills and pull frames from. It takes great images. It has an 18.1 megapixel full frame sensor, so not quite as large as our Mark III or certainly not as large as our Nikon. So there's our lineup. We have six devices that take photos. Let's see how they compare with each other. I chose a scene that was lit by direct sun so the comparison would be easy to see and give a bit of an advantage to the iPhone. Shadows are a place where you'll see the camera break down really fast. So this image is fully lit, giving the advantage to the iPhone. When I first set up the camera, I usually want the sun as a rim light, especially when I'm using strobe. But because I'm not using strobe today, I can't overpower that sun and bring a pleasant exposure to the sky. This would have been a fight to make this image look any good. I can see very quickly that we need to move to the other side of the teepees and shoot looking northwest. This is a much better angle, one that will be easier to light and will look so much better with that blue sky in the background. Here's our first shot. I won't be fighting the sky from this direction. I'll need to open up the shadows on his face though. We're going to use reflectors to make that possible. Let's look at our image lighting. I turn the subject into the sun. This allows me to expose for his skin and keep a nice deep blue background with the clouds. There's a bit of a cloud out although and that helps us a little bit. This is our first image. The shadows are very heavy. When you're shooting continuous light, this is when a good reflector makes such a great difference. We're going to add a 39 inch silver gold light panel from the camera left side. It's going to open up the shadow on the left side of his face. I can shoot with him looking into the sun with a good reflector, as long as it isn't too harsh and it's a bit cloudy today so it works out nicely. For our last light, we're going to add a gold silver pop-up reflector on the camera right side. It's a full length reflector. This will help open up the right side of his face. This opens up his face but doesn't destroy the shadow. It still gives a very real feeling. This is our final lighting. We added smoke in the background. Of course we added smoke in the background with our Roscoe 1900 smoker. You know, it drew too many amps for that small generator we brought. I should have brought the 1700. A note for the future, I guess. I want the smoke to create some atmosphere in the background. It's windy and very hard to control. and It'll be a bit of a challenge, but we're going to fight with it. Here are some of the final images from this setup. It's now time to shoot with each of our cameras. We shot with the iPad in its Padcaster cover. I do love this cover when using the iPad as a recording device or when we're using it as a teleprompter. It's a great way to attach it to stands or to be able to hand hold it to give it some stability. We shot with the iPhone, the Canon 1DC, Canon Mark III, the Nikon 800D, and the Sony 7R mirrorless camera. I shot as quick as we could so the scene would remain the same. The smoke was flying and the cameras are flying in and out. Here are the final images in no specific order. This is photo number one. This is photo number two. And here is photo number three. And photo number four. Now we have photo number five. And last of all, photo number six. Remember, there's no specific order to these. They're just shot randomly. Can you tell which photo was taken with each of these cameras? The Canon 1DC, the iPad, the Canon Mark III, the iPhone, Nikon D800, Sony 7R. Take a minute to look them over and see if you can tell the difference between these six different images. So let's take a look at each of these images full frame with its name so we can see what we learn. This is a Canon 1DC. 
It has a great dynamic range. It holds up well in the shadows. This image is crisp and the color is very vivid. This is the iPhone. It looks diffused and out of focus. The image quality is not very good. It scares me that we are taking all of our future family images with this device. It's not a very good camera. This is the Nikon D800. The image quality is very good. There's a bit more contrast, but a very good image. It has nice color quality. Photo number four is the iPad. It's just obvious. There's more contrast. It's very soft looking. Again, it's just not a great camera. Number five is the Sony 7R. It's probably the most contrasty, but a very good image. I was impressed with the image quality from this little mirrorless camera. It wasn't too contrasty, it held up very well, had a great range. And last of all, number six, the Mark III. Open shadows and a bit orange, but great image quality. I like the dynamic range and the image quality of this camera. It's always been one of my favorites. Now I know you're all going, you compared an iPhone to a full frame camera. The reality is full frame sensors and an iPhone are just not in the same world. I don't think the iPhone or iPad in a range that they should be considered cameras that you record history with. Family pictures, events you want to have in the future, they're just blurry and the image quality is not very good. Now if you want to do very artistic kinds of images where you want that really kind of blurry look, great, use the iPhone. But if you really want to court events that you value, I would get a better camera. Buy a Rebel, you know, a T4i or something that will give you a little better images to pass on to your kids. As for me, I like the dynamic range, the contrast and color rendition of the Canon cameras. They just work for me. So there's my opinion. I know you're going to say it's a full frame sensor compared to an iPhone. That's right it is, and the iPhone lost. Imagine that. Keep those cameras rolling, keep on clicking. We're offering a free download that was put together by our team, Adelaide Lauren and Hector Olgin. It's sponsored by Squarespace, but it's a great free download on how to design your web page, your landing page, so it'll bring people in and convert them into clients. It's called the seven steps to a landing page that sells. So go to the sign and lens forward slash the number seven steps and download this free download. It really is a great download that will teach you the things you need to do to set up a web page that shows your great photography but converts the people that come there into clients that want to hire you. It's the seven steps to a landing page that sells. Free download sponsored by Squarespace. Check it out on the sign and lens forward slash seven steps. Our new giveaway is a $500 gift certificate from Sammy's Camera. Sammy's is a great camera store. I have used them my entire career, literally my entire career. They've been a great place for me to get all the equipment that I need. Sammy's Camera, they're giving away a $500 gift certificate. So go to theslanderlands.com, check out how you can enter there. The $500 Sammy's gift certificate will let you buy whatever you want on their website. So go to theslanderlands.com where you can see how to enter.